we've got the strongest Pokemon, the Sparky, evolving to the final form. Also, you didn't see that sound. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Jake K. Tag and Tara back again with the best comeback deck in Clash Royale. This Sparky deck is an absolute beast. No matter how far behind you are in a game, you can always come back with just one push. So let's go jump straight some games and assert some dominance. I upload daily videos on the channel, so make sure to subscribe so you never miss out. And a huge thank you to you beautiful people who are using credit code SIRTAG. Credit code SIRTAG is what makes it possible for me to upload daily videos. So thank you guys for supporting the channel. Here we go, guys. We got another one. So we're going to sauce out of good luck and we're going to see what's happening. If I go for Zapparino on the tower, well, we can cycle order Sparky a little bit quicker. Oh, come on, man. Don't do me dirty with Logbait Rocket. Don't do me dirty with Logbait Rocket. We hate playing against this because it is a difficult matchup. But if I play my best, we can still make it work. Yep, it's going to be Logbait. Oh, we've only got Zap, guys. It's going to be some spicy interactions in the sides. Oh, my gosh. Well, at least he's not going to have Rocket immediately. So that's one good thing for me. I can go in for a Goblin Giant on top of this and then immediately follow up with a Mini Pekka. Wait. Guys, I'm telling you, we have a chance. He loses the wall breaker. We can easily go in for a rage here with the mini Pekka. He's going to lose the hunter too, right? Oh, that was a bad rage, wasn't it? If I zap on top of the hunter, the hunter doesn't kill the mini Pekka. The mini Pekka gave us a hit. Two hits, baby. No way. I can't believe that. I'm actually shook that that worked so well. I knew that the hunter wasn't going to get a hit off, but I did not expect the raged up mini Pekka to pounce onto the tower with two hits there. That's crazy. So, we're back into the game. So, if your opponent's going to have a Goblin Barrel deck with Canicart, it's a little bit worse than Rocket. Because the Canicart gives counter pressure and it's able to soak up a Sparky hit. So, it's really bad for me. <laughs> I'm going to go for a Dark Prince on top of the Princess. And I can follow up with a Mini Pack if I really wanted to. But I don't want to overcommit here. We'll see what else happens. I'll go in for a Mega Minion on top of this. Or, yeah, I think Mega Minion is probably the play. Let it lock onto the tower and see what else happens here. If I go in for a mini P.E.K.K.A. and we're able to shut down both of these wall breakers, it would be splendid. Nope. But we don't. We only shut down one of them. He's going to go for a bandit. I could zap on this afterwards just to kill it in one hit. Mini P.E.K.K.A. give us a hit. Come on, baby. Don't disappoint me. Okay, you clutched up so hard last time. It's, uh, it's understandable that you can't clutch up another time here. So I'm able to go in for a Sparky. Shut that down. Immediately follow up with a Goblin Giant. I was hoping that he would go in for a Goblin Barrel and then not have Elixir for the right-hand lane. So that's what we're hoping for. We're banking all of our business on this right-hand push. We're going to go in for the Dark Prince of Justice. Maybe he goes in for Skeleton Surround and he doesn't have enough Elixir. We know he doesn't have Rocket. That's going to be hilarious, guys. The Hunter will 100% fall. There's no way. There's no chance that you're able to survive the Sparky spam. Sparky is asserting the dominance, and that is what we like to see, baby. More Zappies on deck. We can go in for another Splendid Sparky push in the left-hand lane. He could try to go in for a Cannon Cart and try to bamboozle me here, but that doesn't work out for you or Toast, brother. So we're in a Mini Packet here on top of the Bandit, and we'll force out more Elixir that way. Are you going... Uh, yo, we can just Goblin Giant up in this business. Let's go. Let's get it. Yo, that is what I'm talking about. So all I need to do is Zapparino, and then that... Oh, it still got a hit. It wasn't supposed to happen that way. All right, we're going to Rage up the Sparky. Come on, Sparky. You know you want to. You know you want to, baby. You know you want to evade that hunter. Go straight towards the tower, and we win the game. That was a rambunctious game if I've ever seen one, but the chaotic games are always the most fun. Okay, he went in for a mini P.E.K.K.A. in the back. That is what I needed, guys. If we have Sparky and we obliterate a mini P.E.K.K.A., that is free elixir. His body is not ready, and I'm so amped up for this. We can go for a Goblin Giant with the Sparky. He's going to Electro Dragon. That's not what we like to see, Chief. That is definitely, most certainly, not good for me. But if we rage up the Goblin Giant and it separates from the Sparky, he's not going to be able to reset it. And the Mega Minion locks on. No, he's going to have Tornado. Why you got to do me dirty like that, bro? Why can't you give me the value? I just wanted some secret sauce up in here. Okay, so we're going to Dark Prince on top of the Lumberjack as well. And that should give us something. But wow, this is bad. So I'm going to zap on top of all of this, and we are taking so much damage. If only he didn't have Cannon Cart with Electro Dragon. Oh, we would have been fine. We would have just straight up taken a tower. But I'm going to show you guys that even if you're in a bad spot like this, don't give up. Never give up. Never surrender. Make sure that you come back in these games. So I'm going to go in for a Mega Minion here on top of the Hunter. He dropped his Electro Dragon. He dropped his Mini P.E.K.K.A. I'm still in an okay spot. 
this is okay and salvageable in every situation. I'm definitely not trying to convince myself like you guys do. <laughs> I feel like I'm trying to convince myself right now. <laughs> but we can still come back. I've made crazier comebacks with this deck for sure. So he's going to Tornado, and then he's going to activate King Tower, which is not the vibe that we like. But it is the vibe that is happening here. So if I go for a Sparky, he's going to Electro Dragon there. And then I can maybe Goblin Giant, and then spam... Oh, that is not what we like to see, Chief. That is not what we like to see. You literally had Golem. Oh, no. This is a tragedy, tragedy waiting to happen. We need to rage up all of our units on defense here. Is he going to be able to defend the right-hand lane? Wait, I think he might have overcommitted. He's going to try to Cannon Card here for sure. He's going to try to, like, Cannon Card, and we'll just push it away with the Mini Kaka. The right-hand side is forfeit. We will snag that, guys. There's no doubt in my mind, with the Goblin Giant, Dark Prince, and Mega Minion all coming down on the right-hand side, we got that tower on lock. But... Can we defend him from three crowning me? That is the question that we have to ask ourselves. He 110% overcommitted. Are we just going to keep spamming with Zappies and hope this works out? That is another alternative play. Just keep spamming, guys. No way. The comeback. And this is why you never give up. This is why you play every game out to the bitter, bitter end. No. Never give up. Never surrender. GG. Well played and peace out, buddy. It was a pleasure playing against you. Later on in a grand challenge, and we still assert the dominance. Here we go, guys. We're going to sauce out a good luck and going for a mini P.E.K.K.A. on top of those Spear Goblins. So right out of the gate, we're in a pretty good spot. Seeing those Spear Goblins out of cycle means one less counter to the mini P.E.K.K.A. And we got a miner out of them for that reason. That's really good stuff. So if you're going to go in for Spear Goblins and Miner, you might have a Mortar Bait deck. You could also have Miner Wall Breakers. We're going to have to find out here. So Miner Wall Breakers is always going to be an interesting matchup. If they play it perfectly and they distract the mini P.E.K.K.A., then things can get really spicy for you. But if they mess up just once and you get the Goblin Giant to destroy the bats and zap on top of whatever they need. Oh, wait, we can just push everything together. The Sparky's going to hit it all. What is he doing? What did that man just do? He donated all of the elixir. That Goblin Giant was able to push it all together. So then the Sparky was able to actually hit what we wanted. So what he was thinking was like, oh, if we just have the Knight soak up the Sparky hits, we're wrecking him. But unfortunately for him, that's not what happened. We zapped the Spear Goblin. The Sparky's going to get a connection, baby. And it gets me so happy when that happens, guys. Sparky has the electricity to light up my life. It makes me so happy. So I'm going to soak up some squad damage. It's okay. I'm not going to spend any real elixir on this thing. Uh, I, I, wait, what is he doing? He's just going to Magic Archer and Tornado. That's so much elixir, bro. What are you thinking? Because you still have to defend against the Dark Prince and the Zappy. I don't think that's the right play on his end. He's not going to be able to afford a knight. There's no way. He overcommitted. <laughs> so that's one of the least skillful plays in Clash Royale with this fast cycle deck. A lot of people think that minor wall breakers with Magic Archer is like very high skill. But if they just drop a Magic Archer and then they tornado all of your stuff into alignment, it's not very skillful in my opinion. That's what a lot of pro players have been saying as well, like Bag. And I, I agree with them. I agree with them on that end. So, if you play it like that and you overcommit with the Magic Archer, it's just one of those tactics that needs a bit of a nerf. Magic Archer Bomb Tower Wall Breakers is one of the strongest decks in the game. And if you guys notice, our deck, it punishes them. And as soon as they make one misplay, they still can't defend, even though their deck is one of the best defenses in Clash Royale. So I'm going to go for my Goblin Giant here. We still have a Sparky about to unload on this man. And I could rage it all up, but at the same time, I don't want to overcommit too much. I want to have Elixir for the right-hand lane. So if we go for a Dark Prince Mini P.E.K.K.A., we're going to be able to make a spectacular push. And I'm pretty sure that we also are able to destroy the... Uh, I think we killed the Magic Archer, too. No! That would have been so nice. That would have been majestic. But the Mini P.E.K.K.A., let's go, baby! That's what we love! Okay, Zappies, you got to clutch up big. No! No! Get off my lawn! Get off my lawn right now, bro! Wait, the Magic Archer retargeted! That is amazing! So he tornadoed everything back, and then because the Mega Minion was the closest thing in proximity, it targeted that instead. That is hilarious. His own tornado screwed him there, guys. GG, well played, and peace out. It was a pleasure playing against you and beating one of the best decks in Clash Royale with Sparky Goblin Giant. We rage, and then we make our opponents rage. All right, so we got a game here. We want to cycle viciously to our Sparky, because that's what we like to start off the game with. Oh, no. Is he going to golem right now? Is he going to golem at the river? I've seen this way too many times. They drop a Night Witch, and they're like, gotta go Golem. Wait, he's gonna have Golem, but I guess he didn't have it in his starting hand, because we already know it would have been dropped at the river like it's a hot potato. So I'm gonna go for a Dark Prince on top of that Bomber, and you've got Witch and Bomber. Wait, what? You've got a lot of splash damage up in here. I was not ready. And you're gonna have Giant, so it's not gonna be a Golem deck. 
So this is different. Things are heating up in the kitchen and I don't know what to expect. What dish is this man gonna concoct for us today? Mini P.E.K.K.A as well. So if the Sparky hits the Mini P.E.K.K.A and also the Giant at the same time, that's what we're hoping for. If it just hits the Mini P.E.K.K.A and it does, let's go. I was banking on that working out for us. And if it didn't, I would have immediately lost the game. We play with fire and we don't get burned. Because electricity, guys, it's more powerful than fire. The elements here, guys. We've got the strongest Pokemon, the Sparky, evolving to the final form. Also, you didn't see that zap. It wasn't a zap, guys. It was a figment of your imagination. Wow, did we just win with that zap, guys? Guys, the zap was just to showcase our dominance in the game. I'm impressed. It was completely and utterly a calculation that we knew. 100% knew we were gonna take the tower there, right? Obviously. <laughs> Guys, I feel like such an idiot for doing that, but you know what? The most fun wins in Clash Royale are the stupidest ones. Eventually. As you guys can see, that zap carried us to victory. It was our spirit animal, it intimidated our opponent, and allowed us to defend the towers. <laughs> GG, well played, and peace out, man. Gotta love making misplays and still winning. So right out of the gate, this guy's gonna go in for a minor. We're gonna see what's up, and we're gonna see what's good. So you're gonna zap me as well? What are you doing, dude? If you're gonna zap immediately, that means that you're not gonna be able to kill the Mega Minion. I'm able to rage this all up, and then zap on top of any bait card or Inferno Tower. Heck, I can zap on top of the Hunter so then the Mega Minion is able to clap down. And the Goblin Giant is still locked under the tower with the Mega Minion, divvying up the damage. This is hilarious, guys. When your opponent's going to have the Fisherman, Zappy's, Rail Giant deck, they think that they have counters to everything. But when they just do one slight misstep, Rage is on their doorstep asserting the dominance. So we're going to go for Mini P.E.K.K.A plus Dark Prince here because Mini P.E.K.K.A is going to have some reliable way of destroying all the Skeletons. Or all those bait cards that are annoying. So the mini pack. Oh, wait, what? What? Are you kidding me right now? He's got Mega Knight too. I did not expect that. I thought it was going to be the RG deck. 99% of the time that you see this stuff, it's always RG. But this guy is switching it up right now. So you're going to have Hunter and you're going to have Mega Knight. If I had a Hog Rider deck or Ray Hawks deck, just be a big fat zero here, guys. There'd be a 0% chance of me winning that match. But... Fortunately for us, that's not the case. So you're going to have Balloon. Wow, okay. So this game is getting a bit wilder by the second. As long as he doesn't zap me, we're chilling. I don't think he's going to zap the zappies, though. I don't think he's that wild. We can also zap on top of the Balloon so it doesn't get that last hit. And we are in a good spot. We don't know what this man is going to whip out next because the deck just doesn't make much sense. But I do know one thing. We can still come out with a solid W because we're up 300 damage right now. So I'm going to go for the Sparky in the back. And I can go in for a Goblin Giant ahead, or I can pull all the stuff in the right-hand side right into the Sparky. That feels pretty good, too. If you're going for a Minor, we just ignore it, because I mean, it's Tickle by Talon, bro. After the Minor nerfs, you just don't play that card, bro. Get that out of my face. So when I go for a Dark Prince, we're definitely going to rage everything up as well. Maybe even hit him up with the Zap, depending on what happens. But if I go in for a Mini Pack on top of the Mega Knight, I feel like that's the better play. Because the Sparky gets pushed back far enough that it's going to stay alive. The Fisherman is near the tower! The Fisherman was about to get zoinked by that Sparky, but unfortunately that did not work out. So we need a Sparky in the right-hand side because I don't trust him. I think he's just going to all in here. And if he does, we would want to make sure that we protect the lower HP tower. And I can go for a Goblin Giant and just rage, and we'll straight up take the left-hand side. No problems, no questions asked. So I just need to be able to defend the right-hand lane, in my opinion. So I'm going to Dark Prince here. He might go for a Fisherman, actually. So that could be the one thing that would be scary. So we have to zap if he goes in for a Fisherman. We need to zap so then the Fisherman does not pull. We just need to make sure that the Fisherman does not Stop pull. Stop it. Come on, Goblin Giant. Give me that hit of justice. That is what I'm talking about. Fish Boy was not able to pull off that Goblin Giant to the middle of the map and solve the riddle. GG, well played, and peace out, buddy. It was a pleasure playing against you. Very crazy deck. I did not expect this thing, and it's so satisfying to beat it. Don't forget to drop a sub and a like, and I'll see you guys in the next one.